So welcome to this uh, Kaylin Dash Tech lesson today. Uh, we're going to be concentrating on uh, installing a Pocona cluster with SSL certificates. Um, this will allow you a master, master, master replication. So we'll go through installing the free radius and the Radman as well again uh, with this installation. So it'll be a bit of a long video, um, but if you bear with me, we'll work our way through it. Okay, so currently at the moment, I've got three systems. I've got Radius 1, Radius 2, and Radius 3. So we're going to do the initial work on uh, Radius 1. In fact, we may as well do all three at the same time initially. So if I show you the uh, release that we're utilizing. So we're utilizing 2204.1 LTS Ubuntu. Okay. So uh, as always, I have a lot of this already written up so I can just copy the commands in there to make it quicker. So the first thing we're going to do is I've edited the net plan um as per previous lessons and i've edited the hosts file as will be seen here so that we have the three hosts in here ready okay so let's clear the screen again so um the first thing that we actually really need to do is because we're going to want this secure in the end is what we really need to do is we need to ensure that the firewall has all the rules that we require in them so for example triple a and the ports for the actual pecona cluster itself um, now you can get um, the information from docs.pecona.com forward slash pecona dash extra db dash cluster forward slash 5.7 forward slash install forward slash index dot html um however it won't actually be 5.7 that we'll be using so i'll give you the commands that will give you the very latest for 2204.1 uh, um, lts for ubuntu so let's set up the firewall rules i've got all of mine listed here so we'll paste these in and we'll go through them so we're allowing uh 443 ssl with tcp uh we're allowing 18 12 18 13 tcp and udp for the um auth requests and the accounting and we're allowing the mysql communication on 3306 um tcp for uh 22 for ssh and these at the bottom the 4444 4567 4568 4444 udp and tcp are requirements for the actual pecona cluster so we're gonna enter all those rules currently at the moment um the firewall is inactive as we can see here and i'm going to keep it inactive for this actual lesson so we'll clear the screen here now we're going to do this on each server so again we'll um sorry that's because i showed that so we're going to copy these rules in again and we're going to put them on the second server and we'll clear the screen and we're going to put them on the third server and again once they're in there will clear the screen okay so what we have to do now is we have to set up the repository um for the uh for the pecona cluster so the first thing we do is we do the obvious app update so we'll do that first and we'll do that on each server and we'll just wait for that to finish i expect the first one's done yep 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 Okay, so that's the update completed. Now we have to start setting up our uh, repository. So we're going to install wget and various other programs. So let's have a look at what we're doing here. So we're going to do uh, wget, gnupg2, lsb release and curl. Okay, so let's install those. 
and we'll do that on each server. Uh, again, that's because I highlighted it. So we'll copy the actual command again. So we're just going to install this on each server. And we'll uh, clear the screen again. So we'll clear the screen here. And we'll clear the screen here. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is we have to get the generic releases. So we're going to do that now. So we'll control C that. And this is the command for the generic releases. I'll leave that on the screen for a moment so there we go with w get at the beginning okay so that's going to pop that into uh again that's because i didn't put the w get on the beginning because i highlighted the other one <clears throat> um and now we're going to do a dpkg to actually set this up as well in the repository. And again, we'll clear the screen. So this is the command. Uh, sorry, this is the command here. If you didn't get that the first time, uh, you'll need to pause the video at certain places to see the commands in full. Okay, but we'll clear the screen on each one. Um, now we have to again do an apt update. So we'll do that now. And we'll do that on each server. So we'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, and that's finished on server one. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to confirm that we're still on dot one because we don't want to upgrade that. So, yep, dot one, Ubuntu, LTS. Uh, again, because I highlighted that. And we are on the correct version on each one. So um, next, what we need to do is we need to set up our PXC80, not the PS80, but the PXC80. So we're going to do that now. So we do a Pocona release, set up PXC80. And this is for Jammy, which is the 22.04. And we'll do this on each server again. And let's just clear the screen again so that we've uh, we've got a nice view for this particular lesson. Ooh. Okay, so we go back to Radius 1. And now we're actually going to install the extra DB cluster application. Okay, so it's apt install minus y. This is if you're already sudoed like I am. Um, as I've said in previous lessons, it's not particularly secure. However, uh, it saves having to put sudo at the beginning of everything. So there's the first one. We'll start on that one. Then we're going to do the second one. It's the same command on each one. We need to install this on each server. Okay, so we'll just wait for this to complete. Um, as always, if you've got any questions uh, regarding um, this installation or this lesson, then just let me know. Um, that'll be fine. We'll we'll uh, try and answer that as best as we can for you, uh, whatever those questions happen to be. Um, after this stage, we're going to move on to the SSL certificates. Okay, so we have to put a root password in here for the um for the for the actual cluster. So I'm just going to put in there 
my root password that I'm already using, but you're going to want to um, make it more secure than the one I'm using. So we just put that in, we repeat it. And then we get use strong password encryption, encryption or use legacy. So what we want to do is we want to use the use strong password encryption. So we'll just do OK there. And that'll install and we've got to do the same on the other two. So we put in our root password again that we want to use. This root password is obviously for getting into my SQL itself. So again, I'm going to do it on the third one. I've spelled that wrong. Okay, so let's see where we are with the first one. We'll just wait for this to complete installation. Which hopefully won't be too long. So there we go, there's the installation. Um, we obviously have to do all the configuration work yet. So let's just wait for the other two to finish so that we can clear the screen on those as well. So we'll clear the second one and we will clear the third one once it's completed. Okay, so let's clear the third one. Okay, so we go back to radius one. And now, well, now these certificates are only completed on radius one on your what is going to be your first server that you boot up do not complete it on any others okay now um what i'm going to do is the first thing we need to do is we need to make a directory okay so i'm going to make a directory and it has to be under etc ssl pacona cluster so we're going to make the directory Pacona cluster under etc SSL. So we'll do that on the first one. This part we have to do on all three servers. The actual certificates themselves we only do on server one. Okay, so then what we do is we obviously need to move to the SSL directory. Which is what we'll do on each one. And then we'll go back to radius one. And we're going to change the owner to MySQL, MySQL, uh, the group and the owner for uh, the Pacona cluster. So we do a chone, change owner, MySQL colon MySQL space Pacona cluster. So we're going to do that. We'll do that here. And we'll do that on the third server as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into the Pacona cluster that we've just created. In fact, we'll do an LS minus LA so that you can see that it's owned by MySQL. Okay, Pacona cluster. All right, now we'll move into Pacona cluster. And what we're going to do is we need to do two things first. Um, this is all on the Pacona website, by the way. Um, so there's two values that we need to enter. The first one is echo basic constraint CA is true into a CAV3 CNF file. So we're basically changing this to be true and inserting it into that file. So that's the first one. And then we have to do a second one, which is in the cert file. So we do a basic constraints false cert version 3.cnf. Okay, so we need to do that on both as well. So what I'll do now is I am going to, uh, no, sorry, we only need to do this on the first one. Okay, for these constraints. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to start the actual certificate installation. Now, I've got this written up in separate lines. You can do it this way or you can do it all on one line. OK, but um, but the first thing I need to do is just change some inputs. 
so what we could do is we can do um, uh, so we'll call this um, I am just making some changes a minute okay so it's going to be open SSL because we're going to do a self-signed in this in this lesson. So let's copy this and I'll paste the command structure into here. So we're doing an open SSL and it's a request. We're asking for a new key, the amount of days it's going to be valid, nodes, the file that it's coming out on. Now the subject is you put in here your location, location, uh, whatever you want to call any of these operational um, area, operational unit, this section here where it says radius 01, CN radius 01, must be unique on every certificate that we create. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to create this certificate. So the certificate is created. Now what we have to do is we have to sign this certificate. So again, I'm going to keep this on the screen for a moment. So it's an exit 509 request. SHA256, again, 3650. Okay, uh, the external file, um, the serial, and the sign of the keys and the output. And it will note that we have everything here, look, that we put in here in the original request. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to create our second certificate because they're servers and they are um, uh, uh, client keys, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a quick change again in a minute because it has different information on the original certificate and I've got to change it. Um, as I said, and you'll see in a moment, we have to change the actual CN name because it has to be unique. So let's copy that. Let's put that in here. So the only change I've made here is the CN I've put as a radius two, you'll notice. So let's create this one. And again, we need to sign it. So we're going to sign it again with the following. This, again, is on the uh, website, on the Pacona website. So again, we've done it, and the CN this time, look, is radius 02. So we've self-signed that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, create the client certificate, which, again, is going to be... I need to make that one change again in a minute. So I'm just going to make that quick change. so that we have that in there. Um, so we have the subject uh, is correct. Uh, so we have everything in there ready for the client. Uh, and this time we'll put radius 03. So we're gonna copy this one and we'll put it in here. You'll notice again, the CN is radius 03. Okay, so we'll create this one. Um, we're going to sign this one as well. So we'll sign this certificate. Um, obviously, you can pause it and copy these commands. This is exactly what is written on the, um, uh, the Pacona website. Okay, now what we can do is we can verify the certificates. Um, I'm going to clear the screen here. So we'll clear the screen and we're going to verify the certificates with this command. So we're going to verify the CA file, CA PEM, server cert.pem and the client cert.pem. We just want to verify they're okay. All right. And it comes back and tells us the client and the server are both okay. Now, obviously what we need to do 
this is why you only do it on the first one. You do not do it on the other two because the certificates will end up being different. So what we've got to do is copy these certificates to the other servers. So here we're going to, first of all, we need to, for this to work, I need to change the certificate owners. Okay, so because I'm logged in as Clive, I know it's root here because I'm sudoed, but the actual user it will use is Clive. So I have to do an LS minus LA, and you'll notice that all the certificates are labeled as owners, group and owner is root. So what I have to do is I have to chion to my username to be able to do this copy, and I want everything changed to Clive Clive. Okay, so um, this is what I'm going to do now. And if we do an LS minus LA now, you'll notice they all belong to Clive Clive. Now, what we have to do is on the other two servers is this command. We have to then change Pocona cluster to be owned by Clive because otherwise we won't be able to um, uh, uh, we won't be able to copy the uh, the certificates across because we won't have permissions to get into the folders required. So now we're going to do the copy. Okay, so we're in the Pocona cluster on server one. And we are going to copy everything, hence the star star, to Clive at radius 02, etc. SSL Pocona cluster. Okay. And the first thing it's going to ask us to do is, do we want the fingerprint? Well, yes, we do. And then it'll ask us for the password. You see what I mean? Clive password. So that will be your password that you set up when you created the user. And those certificates will now be copied. So if we do CD on server 2, uh, Pocona, and we have a look, they're all in there. Okay, now we have to do the same with server 3. So we'll just do that and we'll change it to radius 03. We'll press enter. Yes. Password. And they are copied over to server 3. If we do an LS minus LA, there they are. Now, the problem is, of course, is that they're all labeled as Clive, but they need to be MySQL. So again, we do a chone MySQL colon MySQL star because we want everything as that now if we do an ls minus la they're all my sql we have to do the same on radius o2 so we'll do a chone my sql colon my sql everything make sure you're in the pocona cluster directory when you do this and we'll do an ls minus la and everything there is that now we have to go back a directory and change pocona cluster back so at the moment you'll notice it's clive clive here but we have to change it back to my sql so let's do a chone my sql colon my sql pocona cluster and now if we do an ls minus la we see it's owned by my sql again we have to do that on radius three as well so we're just going to copy the command just to make it a little bit easier a little bit quicker uh, sorry, we have to go back a directory first and then do it. And if we do an LS minus LA, the Pocona cluster again is now MySQL, MySQL. And we have to do it on radius one as well. Um, although I think it already is on this one. I don't think we change this. Nope, that's still MySQL, MySQL. So that's fine. Okay, so now that we've done that, and we've changed it. Um, let's just make sure that we did that on here with the... Uh, no, we didn't. So we need to show MySQL colon MySQL star so that we change it all back to being owned and grouped into MySQL. So let's clear the screen again. So we'll clear the screen on all three servers. It just makes it neater for you to be able to see what's going on. Okay, 
So we've completed that section. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to uh, configure the Picona cluster to function correctly. Again, this is all on um, the Picona website, uh, which I'll put in the um, description, okay, the link that's required. Okay, so now that we've done that, we vi the mysqld.cnf, which is in etc mysql mysql.conf.d which you'll see now okay and um, we will need to do this on each server so we enter that and this is what we see and there are certain sections that we have to edit so we'll do an escape i because i'm using vi and we need to go down to this line here and we need to copy the following location for the certificates for the client okay so we're going to copy i'm going to copy that and paste it in here and then i'm going to put a line in so the three lines we've added you may want to pause it here is the ssl certificate authority and we've actually pointed to where it is okay the certificate we've pointed to where that is and it's in the pacona directory look and the key so these are all the files that we're pointing at for the client. Now, the server ID, this is server ID equals one. Each one will have to be unique. Uh, so we'll put on radius two, we'll put two and on radius three, we'll put three, but we'll see that in a minute. So we go to the PID file and we have to do the same here, but we're also gonna put a TLS version in there, ready for the TLS side. So again, now we're looking at the server side, look, so the certificate authority, again, CA pen, but this time we've got the server cert and the server key, okay? Now, because this is server one of our cluster, we go down and we look at WS rep cluster address. We leave that blank on this one. That has to be blank initially. The bin log format is fine. The slave threads is fine. The log conflicts is fine. The InnoDB is fine. Uh, the WS rep node address. So we highlight that. We uncomment it and we put in this address, which is 56.103. The cluster can be whatever you want to call it, but it must be the same on each server. For the moment, I'm going to leave it at PXC-cluster. And the node name. Well, we know this is radius zero one um, now the mode i'm going to put on here we can leave enforcing on there which is what you should put on there okay so we will actually leave that on there <coughs> and we'll leave the um sst method so we can escape colon save it wq so we save that one but we're not going to start it just yet let's in fact, yes, let's, no, let's configure the other two first. So now we move on to the second one and we've got to do the same here with one difference. So again, we're buying the same file, look, the mysqld.conf. And we'll escape I. So the first thing we have to do is we have to put in the certificate file names. Oh, sorry, a pointers to their location. So again, we put that in. Um, we'll move down to here. Um, we'll put the second section in for the server. And we'll leave a gap. Now this time, on the addresses, we're going to put in the three addresses. Now mine are 192.168.56.103 for this one, comma 192.168.56.103. One zero two comma one nine two dot one six eight dot fifty six dot one zero one. The rest of it is the same as before, except for the obvious difference in address and name and node name. So the node address is fifty six dot one zero two, and the node name is radius 02 and we're going to save that file 
and we're going to move on to radius three. Let's just grab this. And we're going to buy the mysqld.conf on radius three. And again, it's exactly the same other than the, um, the node address and node name. So let's pop this in. And again, we'll move down to here and we're going to pop the cert locations for the server. We've done the client, now we do the server. Um, there was one other section, sorry, my apologies, I will have to go back and edit uh, server 2, I forgot this. So the server ID here is 3. Okay, um, we're going to go down to the addresses. And given that we've got to buy the other one again anyway, we may as well do that now and copy just save time, copy these three addresses and we're going to pop them in there and I may as well do this at the same time, escape I, because you'll notice that I've left the server ID as one and it needs to be two. So we can save that one. Again on the third server, so we go down to the node address, may as well do it here now. So 56.101 and we need to take out the comment hash and we need to change the node name to be radius 03 and we can save that so on radius one it's very very important that we start with a sudo if you're not already sudoed in system ctl start and it's a bootstrap service so it's very very important that we do this correctly on the first system so the first system is system ctl start mysql at bootstrap dot service so let's make sure that that starts okay so we complete that one then what we can do is on radius o2 we do a normal start Uh, not quite sure what happened there. Um, did I put the wrong command in? Ah, yes, I did. Yeah. So, uh, system ctl start mysql. My apologies, I put the wrong command in. Okay, so we can do a system ctl status mysql. And there we go. Started Pacona cluster. This warning we can ignore. That's fine. Um, so we've got it active and running. So we can control C that. And we start it on radius three as well. So we do a system CTL start my SQL. And we wait for it to start. Okay, so it will have started on here as well now. So we can have a look at the status. Okay, we can forget this for the moment. These are just, uh, they're, they're just notifications. That's fine. Um, the system is running. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to confirm that there is an actual cluster up and running. So we're going to log in. Um, so it is MySQL, but it's a Pacona cluster. So everything is MySQL related. So we do MySQL minus U root minus P for the password. So whatever password you set when we installed the system. Okay, so we're into MySQL. Now, what we're going to do here is we want to have a look at the WS rep side of things, all right, for the replication. So we do a show. Um, so we do show status like and we use ws rep okay and we do sorry so we have to put the um hyphenated characters in there ws rep and we do the percent mark to mean anything after so if it starts with ws rep okay and we put the end hyphenated character and the semicolon okay and what we're looking for 
is we are looking for the cluster size. And we've got a three in there. Okay, and that's great. That means there's three members in the cluster and it's operational. Everything is operational. All right. Normally it would be a bit clearer than this, but because of the um because of the size I've got the um the the text that or the font size. Um, obviously, it's a little bit all over the place here. All right. But it shows us it's primary as well. OK, so um, what we can do to confirm the working of this, because we would have to make a database anyway, is what we'll do is we'll on the second server, MySQL minus U root minus P. Let's put the password in. OK, so we'll do. We'll just copy the command from here. Much easier to do it that way. Um, let's just grab that. And we'll have a look on here as well. Okay, we have the three here. And it shows you that at the moment it's operational, not master or primary. Uh, sorry. Um, so the cluster status is primary as well because we're doing that. Of course, we're doing a master, master, master. So we'll do a MySQL, oh, MySQL minus u root minus p and we'll put the password in and we'll put the same command in here um, okay uh, let me just copy it be easier so we'll just copy that and we'll pop it in here and we've got the same here okay right so the way we can prove everything is let's do show databases if I could spell. So you notice we don't have a radius database. Okay. And we'll do the same on this one. Show on radius 2. Show data bases. Okay. And again, no radius. And on the first one, on radius 01, show data bases. So we don't have one. So what we're going to do is to show you how this works, okay, and to show that it is working, we're going to create an actual database, all right? So we're going to create database radius. So let's do a create database radius because we need one anyway. Let's make sure it's spelled correctly. It is. Okay. So now let's have a look at the show databases. And you'll notice we've got radius in there. Now, we only did it on server one. If we go to radius 02, you'll notice it's not there. But if we have a look now, it is. Because it's immediate, this is why the Picona is so great, is the speed compared to MySQL replication using MySQL by itself. Okay, if we go to number three, you'll notice it's not there. But if we have a look now, it is. Okay, so we have the Pacona cluster working with SSL protection. Okay, so that's how we install the Pacona. Um, installing the free radius and configuring the free radius and installing Radman and configuring Radman is exactly the same as previous lessons with MySQL. Okay, so now that we've confirmed the operation of the radius, we go back to radius 01. And what we have to do, only on radius 01, okay, on the, the one that we started with the bootstrap service, we then stop the bootstrap service. So we stop it. Only on radius 1. So we wait for that to stop and we'll clear the screen. So we've stopped the bootstrap service. Now we have to via the file again, the mysqld.cnf. Now what we do is we enter the three addresses. Okay, so we go up to where we hadn't entered the addresses. So we'll put 192.168.56.103. One zero three comma one nine two dot one six eight dot fifty six dot one zero two comma one nine two dot one six eight dot fifty six dot one zero one. That's my addresses. Yours are going to be different, I suspect. 
Um, so we'll save that. And now what we can do is we can start it normally. So now we do a start, a system CTL start my SQL. And we can go back in and confirm the operation of this afterwards. So we will go back into MySQL minus U root minus P. And we'll put in the password. Okay, and we'll do a show databases first. Okay, and then we'll do the WS rep command to ensure that everything is still there, working correctly, and it is. And the reason the conf ID has changed is simply because we've stopped and started the service. Okay, so we can now exit that, and that is the Pocona cluster setup. Now, the important thing to remember with a Pocona cluster that's in a master, master, master scenario is which system will have the latest um, database information. So if you ever have to stop all three servers, the last server that you stop is the first one that you start again, and you must initially start it with the bootstrap.service command. Again, that's in the information in the documents on the Pocona pages. Okay, so just try and remember that. So you start it with the bootstrap service, you then start the second and the third, and then you use the same order again where you stop the bootstrap service on the first one and then start it normally with MySQL. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, let me know if there's any questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.